Good morning. And welcome to worship. I'm Rob Kopp, the pastor of Bemidji United Methodist Church. And I'm Michelle Miller. I'm the pastor of Wesley United Methodist in Crookston and Faustin and Erskine United Methodist Churches. And well, Michelle, we have uh, not been leading worship for two weeks. I think we'll uh, still remember how. I, I hope so. Um, <laughs> There have been uh, a few changes along the way. Uh, one of them, you might have noticed that uh, we have a, uh, a key, uh, keyboard that has a variety of different voices and instrumentation that's capable of. And so, uh, and we just heard the strings. Yeah, Lisa Bragg um, is uh, playing for us today, uh, playing with that instrument. And uh, so it's one of the uh, one of the new things we have. Uh, at our disposal. Yep, recorded and, in the sanctuary at the Bemidji Church. And um, I'm trying to think, I thought there was something else that I wanted to add to that. Oh, we're having communion Yes, today. we are. And so uh, it's good, uh, if you have not already done so, for you to find uh, some bread and juice. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be as inspecific as that, I think, yep. in terms of uh, what will work for us to uh, to be able to have communion together. Um, we will uh, consecrate, uh, which is to say add the blessing to uh, whatever you have at your disposal and uh, be able to celebrate that together. Um, with that, uh, it is a joy and blessing for us to be in worship together and uh, we uh, welcome you and are glad that you're, you are here. Yes. Let us join together in the call to worship. Every day, hearts and bodies are breaking. Every day, the suffering of God's people continues. Though we will not turn away from the struggle, we wonder, we cry, we lament. Will power remain in the arms of the wicked forever? Will racism and anti-blackness go on perpetually? Will money ever cease to be valued over people? Every day, the choice is before us. It doesn't have to be this way. Who will we be? What kind of lives will we live? What justice will we seek? With faith, let us worship together. May the Spirit come and shape us in truth and freedom divine. And let us join together in singing the hymn, Help Us Accept Each Other.
Let us pray. Holy Wisdom, we bring into your presence the fullness of who we are, the hurting parts, the regrets, the murky and the messy. We have been wounded and we have wounded others. With courage and humility, we seek your guidance in the mending of the worlds between us and within us. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Genesis, the 50th chapter. When Joseph's brothers realized that their father was now dead, they said, what if Joseph bears a grudge against us and wants to pay us back seriously for all of the terrible things we did to him? So they approached Joseph and said, your father gave orders before he died, telling us, this is what you should say to Joseph. Please forgive your brother's sins and misdeeds, for they did terrible things to you. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of your father's God. Joseph wept while they spoke. His brothers wept too, fell down in front of him, and said, We're here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I God? You planned something bad for me, but God produced something good from it in order to save the lives of many people, just as he's doing today. Now don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your children. So he put them at ease and spoke reassuringly to them. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. As much as the majority of my sermons have been based on the Gospels, I do love preaching from the Hebrew scriptures. There's so much going on in the stories and history which forms the basis of Jesus' faith and of our experience of being followers of Jesus. Among the aspects of the Hebrew scriptures I love is the way it describes human beings and their behavior and God's relationship to them and to us. If you are looking for stories about how perfect people of faith demonstrated in the way that God would have us act, well, you better not spend much time with the Bible. It is filled with stories of how human beings have acted poorly, how we have failed to treat each person, including our enemies, as people of sacred worth. It seems inherent in our anthropology. It's part of who we have been, and if we are honest, who we are, even in the midst of knowing and believing better. Most, if not all of us, have some history of violence in our family systems. If not actual physical violence, the implied threat of physical violence. It's in my family. I'm willing to bet it's also in yours. Joseph and his brothers are one of these stories Joseph's brothers first plot to kill him while making their intention clear by throwing him into a cistern. And then, having a slight change of heart, decide instead to sell him into slavery. Later, the tables are turned and the brothers come to Joseph during a famine, not realizing that they are asking for mercy from the person whom they did not show mercy. For me, it is not entirely clear whether the brothers are actually repentant. Sure, they offer words of apology, but repentance is more than an apology. To repent is to turn the other way, to do the exact opposite of what you have been doing. It involves changing your behavior. In the recovery community, is it, it is expressed with these words. Sure, you can talk the talk, but can you also walk the walk? Repentance is more than apology, more than confession. It's probably the most difficult thing you or I can do. It requires transformation. We don't know if Joseph's brothers actually repent because they never have to demonstrate it through their behavior. For the sake of what I am called to preach today, I'm going to say they apologized, but did not repent. 
I say this because the story is not only about Joseph and his brothers. It's also about our families and ourselves. And there are many stories in our lives where apology comes short of repentance. Sometimes even honest attempts at repentance fail and fall short. What then? Where is the good news in the story? And where is God in the story? Where is God in our stories? The good news is that Joseph's forgiveness is not based on his brother's repentance. It would be the best for everyone if they did. But maybe they just aren't capable. Joseph forgives them anyway. His forgiveness is not only about them and him. It is an act of mercy that plays out for many generations beyond Joseph and his brothers. And, we, and when we hold this as our story, as one of our sacred stories, we are among the generations which benefit from Joseph's forgiveness. We are reminded yet again that the decisions and behavior we make will have an effect on future generations, even after we are gone. We live in a time such as this. I've been struggling with the political rhetoric that we are in the midst of. So much of it feels violent to me, and I'm not identifying that with one side or another. I'm not getting into choosing sides today. That's not what this is about. It's about how we act with one another. And it is about our families, because most of us are in families with members on both sides of the dividing line. Sometimes it has led to acts of physical violence. And often it has resulted in words that carry the threat of violence to one another. Such is the time we live in. I do not place hope in either side repenting. Again, repenting is hard work, and many of us will not be willing or able to do so. Like most of you, I've lived through more than one election cycle. And while this one seems worse, I do feel I have seen it all before. But I do have hope for us and for our world. I have hope because we are participants in God's world. It's not only about us. And God continues to work with and through this messy business of our unrepentant selves. God continues to forgive where we have not repented. And our very lives depend on God's forgiveness. Just like Joseph's brothers, God has not given up on us. Having said all of this, and I hope you can hear this, we are called to repent. Not for the sake of earning God's forgiveness, we are called to repent so we experience the fullness of life God calls us to be participants in. We don't have to be coerced. We can willingly choose to be participants in God's love, which is more than what we seem capable of. God is not preventing us from doing better. God invites us to forgive and to repent. And this is good news. As followers of Jesus, we follow knowing what is possible in our lives when we participate in God's transformation of us. Until such a time when our entire world will be transformed on earth as it is in heaven. You and I are called to repent and forgive in the here and now. And let us do so trusting in the path set before us through God whom we know in Jesus and all of God's family all over and all of God's side in all of the divisions that God's people experience among each other all of God's people say amen
Let us join together in singing, This is my song. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your beloved child, Christ Jesus. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, dead, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On his last night before meeting death at a last supper, Jesus blessed and broke the bread one last time, feeding his disciples with these words, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. And after supper he took the cup, gave thanks yet again, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we may know your blessing and receive your grace. And pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so now you are invited to, uh, to follow us as we serve each other. Um, if there's more than one person uh, participating uh, in your home or in wherever you are worshiping from, uh, we invite you to serve communion to each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the ways that we experience community, and, uh, and likewise we will do that in our home. And the words you might use are the bread of life given for you, the cup of salvation given for you. Rob, the bread of life given for you. Amen. And the cup of salvation given for you. Amen. Michelle, the bread of life given for you. 
Michelle, the cup of salvation poured out for you. Amen. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray. For all who need the assurance of God's grace and love, that they may have courage to live lives of forgiveness, grace, mercy, and repentance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the nations and cities of the world, that they may be wise in their administration of government during this pandemic and selflessly serve the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in our churches, that we may faithfully tend the family of God during the season of social distancing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and other health care workers who tend the sick and dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and those in quarantine, that they may find comfort and care in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who live and work in congregate living situations, like prisons and nursing homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, teachers, staff, bus drivers, administrators, and parents in the complex start of this school year, for wisdom, patience, understanding, stamina, and creativity that all may flourish as much as possible in mind, body, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth you have given to our care, and for all creatures who share it with us, that you may glorify, be glorified in all your works. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the parts of the west coast of this country as they fight many, many fires, um, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For other concerns that we hold in our hearts, we take a time of silence now. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. What makes a community loving is not a lack of mistakes. It is what we do after we inevitably wrong one another. A loving community is honest. It learns and grows. It seeks to mend through truth and justice and change. With God's help, we practice this in this place. In gratitude for the sacred investment we make in one another, let us bring what we have together.
Let us join our voices in the prayer of dedication. Just and compassionate one, as we bring our offerings, we remember that economic oppression is one of the great and ongoing violences of our world, still so far from redemption. Guide our practices, individual and collective, in the stewardship of our resources. May we be faithful in sharing redistributing and disrupting the systems of exploitation that harm us all in body and spirit. Amen. Beloveds, though there is much in the world we cannot control, the power we have is sacred and true. In partnership with God, through practices of honesty and confession, through extensions of mercy, through resistance that heals and transforms, we, get, we glimpse the heavens and the kingdom draws near. In the company of the Holy Spirit, we are sent to join the menders of the world. Amen.